a little nervous about uh, this week's video. Um, for the most part, I've kind of, you know, staked out my my wheelhouse as, uh, you know, I I read and review comic skate books. So I'm kind of venturing out of my comfort zone today. I'm going to do a mainstream comic book. But, I mean, there's been a lot of chatter on Twitter and social media this week about this Alan Scott Green Lantern. And, you know, your old pal Tommy, he doesn't march with the herd, okay? I don't let anyone make up my mind for me. I'm not going to uh, come to a position without reading the source material myself. And then I'll tell you what I think. So you know that when you're watching a video from Thomas T. Tuttle, what's the T stand for? Trustworthy. You know you're getting the straight poop. It's like uh, Virginia's father told her about the Baltimore Sun and Santa. You know, it, if, if you hear about it from Tommy, it's so. So, I picked up Alan Scott Green Lantern 1. Uh, I, I don't see what the, the, the headache was really all about. Uh, it opens with a, a nice little two-page story by Marty Nodell and Bill Finger telling us who Alan Scott is. He's like a train engineer or something, and he, there, there's, a, there's an accident, and he um, encounters the green flame of life. And the green flame of life tells him, uh, three times do I flame, once to bring death, once to bring life, once to bring power. So I'm guessing this is the, the third time because uh, Alan Scott um, emerges with the power of the, you know, the, the green flame. And so, as uh, you would expect, he fashions himself a, a costume and becomes Green Lantern. So then, nice, so nice little intro because there there are a lot of people out there who might not know who Alan Scott is. You know, even if they think they're familiar with Green Lantern, maybe they only know the Ryan Reynolds movie. Maybe they only know, you know, Nort from the eighties. You know, you don't you don't know. So this introduces us or the reader to the idea that uh, there there was a Green Lantern. That kind of started the whole ball, the whole, the whole ball, the whole ball rolling. So, you know, I'm a sucker for alliteration. All right, uh, as you can probably guess from Thomas T. Tuttle, which is not a name I chose myself. It was a name I was uh, assigned at birth. So uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cis Tuttle, um, but I'm a fan of alliteration uh, based on my name, and so. The first real story in the book is Green Lantern and the Adventure of the Masquerading Mayor. So right away, you know, it got my interest up because, as I say, alliteration—you always know something's gonna, something good's gonna come out of a comic book that makes use of alliteration. You know, Stan Lee famously uh, used alliteration for all his characters because it was the only way he could remember the names. So, you know, his P character was Peter Parker, his R character was Reed Richards, his S character was Sue Storm, you know, his M character was Matt Murdock, and so forth and so on. So, you know, comics and alliteration have a long and distinguished history. Uh, so, I'm already interested in the masquerading mayor. What WTF, you know what I'm saying? What in the hell is a mayor... Not a mayor, by the way, not someone who uh, has the executive uh, branch of a town, but a, a female horse. What the hell is a mayor doing uh, masquerading as anything? And what what is a mayor going to masquerade as? I mean, if you show me a horse with a party city wig on it, I'm going to say that's still a horse. You know, so the, the, the masquerade kind of defeats the purpose. So Green Lantern, Alan Scott, I should, I should say Alan Scott Green Lantern, Alan Scott colon Green Lantern, is uh, 
asking the same questions I'm asking. Basically, WTF is going on. So he suits up and he's got his own oath, uh, which is not the rhymey kind. It's the green flamey kind. And it just says, and I shall shed my light over dark evil, for the dark things cannot stand the light, the light of the Green Lantern. And he's off and going. And he flies around and finds the mayor. And I'm telling you right now, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a boomer, okay? So I don't know how to, like, match up video uh, images on these things. I'm, I'm, I'm using a, a little app that was free on my phone. But if you can see this mayor, okay, you're going to say, Tommy... It looks like an effing horse. And, and you're right. I mean, it's not masquerading as anything. So, I mean, it, it might be one of those um, ironic titles of which I've heard. So then Alan Scott, you know, has to beat up the bad guys. And there's some femme fatale there. And Alan Scott makes googly eyes at the woman. As was the custom. It turns out the whole thing with the masquerading mayor, I think, I think, uh, is that the bad guys are masquerading the mayor as another mayor. And so they're using it to uh, get some advantage in a horse race, which that makes sense. I mean, I think of all the things a horse could disguise itself as, you know, another horse would seem to be the most obvious. And then Green Lantern f finds the bad guys, and he's climbing up a building here to get into the bad guy's apartment, which makes very little sense to me, because Green Lantern can fly. Um, but it's very possible that uh, Marty Nodell and Bill Finger forgot that. Um, also, back in the day... Green Lantern seemed to use his power. Alan Scott Green Lantern. I keep screwing that up. Alan Scott colon Green Lantern. Emphasis on the colon. Um, seemed to use his power to go through a lot of walls. He turned, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, ethereal a lot back in the, back in the day. So that's, it's nice to see that power coming back. So. Long story short, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil too much. This is a sixty-one page book, which I was very impressed at in this day and age. Sixty-one page book. Uh, this guy who made the video, I didn't see him in the credits anywhere. I'm gonna have to go back and look. Um, there was a lot of this guy Nodell, who I think is uh, gonna have a bright future in front of him. Um. Because, again, this story was a lot of fun with the mayor and the flying and the climbing up the walls and stuff. And there were a lot of, a lot of really good in-jokes. Um, you know, this Nodell is um, a pretty witty guy. <laughs> um, so I uh, thoroughly recommend Alan Scott Colin. Green Lantern, number one. Um, I will say also, there has been a lot of hullabaloo with that guy who made the videos about, you know, queer phobes and allies, and this is a, a big thing in the culture war. I didn't get any of that at all, okay? Um, it, it might be one of those things where the... Um, you know, the advertising or, or the marketing was more than, or, or different from, you know, they, they, the, the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing because I didn't even pick up in this book that Alan Scott was gay. I mean, I knew it because of the title, Alan Scott, colon, Green Lantern. Um, and of course all the hollow blue and the fact that, I mean, you know, like, Alan Scott 
became gay in like 2009 when James Robinson made an alternate version of Alan Scott gay in the book Earth 2. Uh, later Earth 2 World's End and Earth 2 Society. And then uh, Tinian introduced the idea that not only was that alternate Alan Scott gay, but the Alan Scott we knew was gay. He introduced that idea in 2021's Infinite Frontier. So for all this, this Tim guy was talking about Alan Scott being gay. Alan Scott being gay was gay long before you came along, Tim. So what exactly is it that you would say you do here? Um, but be that as it may, and I doubt that it was, uh, I didn't pick up on Alan Scott being gay at all in this book. So a lot of Sturm und Drang, a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing, a lot of hullabaloo with no bulla hola. Um, so go pick up Alan Scott Cullen, Green Lantern number one by Marty Nodell and Bill Finger and some contribution from this Tim guy. Hi. High recommend from your old pal Tommy. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Tom Tuttle.